yes good morning all of you the voice is clear <clears throat> my voice is clear to everyone yeah am i audible okay thank you Yeah, last class we were discussing about uh, some properties like uh, bulk modulus of elasticity of fluid, and we discussed some problem on uh, compressibility and other things. Also, we discussed about uh, uh, surface tension with the droplet bubbles and the cylindrical uh, or infinite length of cylinder. Now today we'll see other properties. Uh, before going to that i think we have left with one of the problem can anyone reply me is this problem is solved in last class the pressure inside the droplet of water of 0.05 mm in diameter yes sir is this problem is solved okay next problem okay this you solve and check i'll just read the question here you also can uh, just observe a liquid bubble 2 cm in radius okay so convert that into diameter a liquid bubble 2 cm in radius has an internal pressure of 13 pascal calculate surface tension of liquid film now go back to the bubble equation what should be used so that equation is given by p equal to 8 sigma by d d is given so how much will be the diameter diameter is 4 cm convert that into meters and 13 pascal pressure is given internal pressure is given so convert that into newton per meter square so how much will be newton meter square newton per meter square if it is in 13 pascal yes so what is the unit of pascal Yes, it is nothing but 13 newton per meter square. So take those values, just substitute in the given equation, and find sigma. Whether you are getting 0.065 newton per meter or not, just check it, and we'll go to the next properties. So like this, you can take many examples, and you can solve the problems on different properties. so how much is the surface tension force per unit length <coughs> that is newton per meter so how much you are getting just verify with the answer all of you are solving the problem
सिग्मा इक्वल टू पी डी बाई एट यस यश प्रभु पॉइंट जीरो सिक्स फाइव न्यूटन पर मीटर ओके वन एज गॉड द आंसर ओके आई थिंक आंसर व्हाट आई हैव रिटर्न इज देयर इज करेक्ट विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू यूर कैलकुलेशन सो विल नाउ मूव ऑन टू द अदर टॉपिक या सम थ्री फोर मेंबर्स हैव गिवन द रिप्लाई थैंक यू So now we'll go to the other property that is capillarity. So this is the one more property. Again, it is possible only due to the surface tension of the liquids. So whenever you take any liquid in a container which is stagnant or the uh, without flow, and if I dip any small pipe or a, a glass tube to see the capillarity phenomena. so after dipping that small diameter tube you cannot take very big diameter pipe or very big container or a, a closed channel and if you put it inside the water or any liquid it will not rise or dip it also requires a small diameter so how much is the diameter it is dependent on the surface tension of that liquid and the density of the liquid it all depends on the properties of the liquid also okay so the diameter of that pipe what are you take for this uh, capillarity phenomena to check it should be small compared to the container so once you dip that tube inside the liquid so based on that surface tension of the given liquid and as we discussed the cohesion and adhesive forces so depending upon those forces either the liquid will rise in the capillary tube so that name itself indicates capillary means it is a rise of small channel or the part of the liquid in the small channel okay that is a capillary action many times we call it as capillary action so that takes place only with the small diameter of the pipes so in that if the cohesive forces are very less means if the adhesive forces are more okay some liquids will try to attach to the different surfaces or the different materials more the affinity of attracting of molecules with a different material is more in such cases there will be capillary rise means liquid tries try to attract or try to attach on the other material that is called as capillary rise this will happen when the cohesive forces are less because molecules in between the given liquid itself the forces are very less the cohesive forces are very less and adhesive forces if if it is more then the liquid try to rise in the capillary tube by attaching on the surface of the different material made up of glass or metal or any other uh, material and this will form some meniscus so as in the sketch you can see i have shown the meniscus meniscus means the level of the water of the liquid at what level we are taking that level we are calling it as meniscus if it is making a concave type of shape with the more adhesive forces or more molecules of the liquid are attached on the different material on the pipe surface then that type of meniscus we are calling it as lower meniscus because it is preparing a concave shape why because at the wall of the pipe if you see this is the section of pipe at the wall or the circular shape of the pipe if you see the liquid molecules are attached on the surface of the pipe more than the molecules attracted by them themselves the forces due to same molecules is less but the force of attraction due to different molecules is more that's why they are attracted towards the inside surface of the pipe so that's why we are calling it as adhesive forces when it is more it will be having capillary rise now another case if you take i will take same pipe with given diameter and i will dip this pipe on the right side sketch you can see that pipe i will dip in the given container and if the cohesive forces are more means the same molecules of the given liquid if the attraction force is very high then what will happen the attraction force with the different material of the molecules will be very less in such liquids 
the capillary dip will be there or capillary fall will be there whenever you uh, dip inside this uh, liquid container with the uh, very high cohesive forces because of the high tension of the surface tension what will happen that liquid will try to dip or fall inside that pipe but outside the container if you see the liquid is above that level or uh, outside the pipe if you see the liquid is above the uh, meniscus of the pipe level and that will be forming some angle with respect or surface tension if you see that will be making some angle with respect to pipe or in the earlier case also it will be making some angle with the pipe but here if the cohesive forces are very less or the surface tension is very less in such cases the angle between the pipe and the surface tension force will be acute angle less than 90 degrees if the cohesive forces are more in the given liquid that will be forming the <coughs> upper meniscus or the level of the liquid if you see it will be preparing a convex shape okay and if you measure the angle between surface tension sigma and the angle between the pipe vertical line that will be making the obtuse angle so both the theta values is shown there so which is acute which is obtuse you can just understand so this phenomena of rising or falling of liquid in the given pipes or a small diameter of pipes the is called as capillarity so in which liquids it will be rising in which liquids it will be lowering that can be understood by also understanding the cohesive and adhesive forces or the surface tension is that clear so now coming to the examples of that liquids now see here they have taken for capillary rise they have taken water as an example now earlier examples we have discussed water will be having more cohesive forces than the adhesive forces yes or no in earlier concept but here what we are discussing is compared to mercury compared to mercury the water is having less cohesive forces and one more liquid if you take with still more, still very less cohesive forces then i can tell it as compared to water it is having less cohesive forces water is having more cohesive forces like that so relatively if you see the phenomena of capillarity is here as per the angle of uh, surface tension with the pipe water is having relatively less cohesive force compared to the mercury and mercury if you say see in the pipe it will be having the fall in the mercury level in the pipe inside the pipe and it is forming obtuse angle so by that i can tell it as mercury molecules are having more cohesive force than the adhesive force they are not trying to attach on the surface of the pipe which is made up of different molecules so next we will try to derive an equation for this capillarity so here before going to derivation all of you take this sketch so in this sketch either you can consider a capillary rise from the liquid layer in the container so that rise will consider h so as per the rise here the liquid is having less cohesive force compared to adhesive forces that's why there is a capillary rise that is one reason and later why we are considering h at the lower side is so whenever you consider this height or the uh, level of the liquid above the container level we are assuming that whatever the extra particles of the liquid are attached on the pipe surface are negligible only the liquid which is contained in the pipe throughout the length of the height or if you take the cross section area of the pipe pi, pi by 4 d square and h if you take the volume volume of liquid inside the pipe is more with respect to lower meniscus and if you take the lower meniscus to the point where the liquid is attached on the surface of the pipe if you consider that volume of liquid how much it is there it will be negligible in the given volume compared to the volume which is covered by the pipe and filled with liquid okay and now if you consider the surface tension by this curved surface in earlier case for the bubble and droplets we have considered that surface tension is perpendicular to that line or exactly aligned with the pipeline 
for the bubble and droplets but here if you see due to cohesive and adhesive forces of a capillarity action it is making some angle with respect to pipe that angle we are calling it as theta now we need to find out how much is the capillary rise h or how much is the capillary fall now same example you can take with the mercury also if i consider for mercury or some other high surface tension liquids if i dip the pipe what will happen it will form a fall in capillary uh, capillary action so that meniscus of the lower side of the mercury level if you see it is lower than the liquid layer in the container just opposite to this you can consider and theta in that condition it will be obtuse more than 90 degrees just like this on the right side you can see if you consider mercury fall or the fall in the capillary action it will be like this so i hope all of you understood the capillary rise or fall how it is taking place <coughs> okay we will uh, move to the next part now as i told you we are going to consider with respect to meniscus levels we are also if you see in the mercury the upper meniscus if you consider the volume of the liquid is more okay below from that level of the meniscus and we are considering there are more molecules in this upper meniscus because their cohesive forces are more so that volume collection of that liquid will be more in the upper meniscus but in the lower meniscus type of examples if you see the volume of the liquid collected is more below the lower meniscus level not with respect to side walls so side walls whatever the volume of a liquid is there it will be neglected so keeping that in mind we are going to check how to find out this surface tension force or i can call it as i can also find out the uh, height or the rise of the capillary or the fall of the capillary h so we are going to take the total weight of the liquid volume in the pipe and we are going to consider this sigma force or the surface tension with respect to the surface area of that meniscus okay and also we are going to consider at at what angle the surface tension is acting these points are very important for the deriving the equation for the capillary rise or fall now coming to the vertical components because the weight of the liquid is acting in vertically downward direction surface tension if you see it is acting on the vertical direction in the capillary tube so taking this vertical actions or the vertical components of the force the weight of the liquid in the tube i can write it as weight of the liquid only in the pipe not in the container so in the pipe if i consider the weight of liquid i can write it as volume okay volume into rho g what is rho g density of the given fluid and gravitational force at what it is acting because always the weight is acted by gravitational force so rho g you can also write it as specific weight also like gamma in the earlier case we have discussed if you multiply specific density with gravity it will become specific weight is that clear so you can write gamma into volume or i can write it as rho g into volume now what is the volume of liquid so volume of the liquid in a cylindrical container is nothing but the cross section area into height of that liquid volume so that height of the liquid volume we have considered as h so that i will multiply h into cross section area of the pipe so whenever i tell about pipe it will be circular pipe okay complete syllabus we are going to discuss about the pipes so whenever we call about pipes we have to consider circular in dimensions so that circular pipe if i take i can write it as cross section area as pi by 4 d square now this becomes the weight of the liquid in vertically downward direction that weight is balanced by the surface tension sigma on other side so weight now i can write it as pi by 4 d square rho g h so this rho g h is very important in the later cases weight we know now you can consider the vertical component 
which is acting opposite to the weight of the liquid in the pipe that is balanced by the surface tension if there is no surface tension the liquid will layer was in line with the container layer itself there is no capillary rise or there is no capillary fall if the surface tension is not there if surface tension is there the weight, whatever the fall or rise is there that will be balanced by that weight of the liquid now what is the force or what is the tensile force which is, which is uh, balancing this weight in the tube to stand for a given height so that we are writing so already you know surface tension is acting on the surface or the ring of that uh, circular uh, diameter so that surface tension we can write it as sigma pi d on the circular surface and it is acting at an angle so that angle we know with respect to adjacent and hypotenuse which is the sigma so that angle we, are, we can take it as cos theta as a component now equating these two equations that is weight of the liquid pi by 4 d square rho g h equal to sigma pi d cos theta if you equate i can derive the equation for capillary rise or fall that is h equal to what we will get h equal to sigma pi d cos theta divided by what are the product of h was there which product of h that will be in denominator so that i can write pi by 4 d square rho g after simplification that 4 will come above from the denominator so can finally we can write it as for capillary rise or the fall for both equations h equal to 4 sigma cos theta by rho g d so this equation we are using for both the cases for the capillary fall or the capillary rise so here generally they are given for water the angle is almost zero so that cos theta may be one if water density may be changing the surface tension may be also changing so in such cases we'll consider some theta value and we'll take the actual value of the cos theta for mercury so there will be fall in the capillary action so that fall i can consider as obtuse angle with obtuse angle with the pipe so that theta we can consider it as 128 degrees so that is here this obtuse angle angle between the pipe vertical line pi and the surface tension force which is acting downward side because of the more cohesive forces so that is taken here 128 degrees theta is almost 128 degrees if it is not given we can take like this we can assume or if they told to find out we will find out the actual theta only so this is general case what they have given so we'll take one problem on this later we will go to the other concepts on the capillarity the first problem is calculate capillary rise in a glass tube when immersed in mercury at 20 degree centigrade assume surface tension sigma for mercury at 20 degree centigrade as 0.51 newton per meter see surface tension value is given 0.51 newton per meter the diameter of the tube is 5 mm this will be the inside diameter of the pipe only diameter of the tube is 5 mm and angle of contact between the surface tension and the pipe is 130 degrees now just generally you recall the concept again for this obtuse angle and mercury is given there will be capillary rise or fall just one of you can reply Yes, there will be fall. Correct. So there will be fall in the given capillary action because it is having mercury and angle is obtuse. So only to check whether you will be finding the capillary rise or fall, they are, they are confusing in the question. Okay, as per the general equation, they are telling find the capillary rise. So whether the fall or rise, we will check in the answers. So again, write this capillary action equation height of capillary rise or fall is 4 sigma cos theta by rho gd so diameter is given 
convert that in meters g you know density of the water how much you will write density of the water is 1000 correct or you can write gamma value itself specific weight itself you can write 9810 sigma value is given in the problem 0.51 in si unit cos of 130 so take all these values and check the answer so how much is the capillary rise or fall now fall is by 0.015 okay 0.015 meters no I think here thirteen thousand six hundred you have taken. It is wrongly taken. I think. So if you check once again for the given density, sorry, density of mercury it is. See, again I am also confusing. Here mercury is given the problem. Density of mercury, mercury we didn't consider. we took the density of water itself it is not the water okay this is the confusion so take the density of mercury surface tension of the given mercury that is 0.51 newton per meter cos of 130 diameter of the pipe g so be careful density of mercury we need to consider minus 0.026 for the mercury just check to so keep that answer as it is write it as comment for the water you can write it is as for water so check whether it is 0.015 or 0.026 whatever if angle is like that that will be fall minus 0.00196 yes minus 0.00196 meters is the fall in the mercury level very good others what about others please try to find out the answers so once you practice here itself it is enough okay once you get in negative value you can write it as it is a capillary fall because in the question they are asking capillary rise so you have to tell it as it is a capillary fall okay so solve this problem by yourself next problem is on again the capillarity determine minimum size of the glass tube ha see here here they are asking what is the diameter of the glass tube required now to have the capillary rise okay determine minimum size of the glass tube diameter or the glass tube uh, that can be used to measure water level if capillary rise is not to exceed not to exceed 2.5 mm so which is that value of 2.5 mm given in the problem that it should not cross the capillary rise by 2.5 mm means it is h h value is given 2.5 mm take sigma of the surface tension of which liquid liquid they have given as water so i'll consider the density as 1000 here in this problem i'll take 1000 surface tension value they have given 0.0736 newton per meter for the given water so in this problem you check at what diameter this can be sustained
Yes, what is the diameter of the pipe required? 12 mm. 12 mm, just a minute. very good so in this problem we were missing with the cos theta so as i told you whenever the two data are missing like diameter and uh, angle also both side then we can assume for water that theta angle may be zero like this yeah, this assumption we can do cos theta you can consider it as one or cos of zero you can take it as one for water if mercury theta is not given you can Take 28. Okay, if theta is asked to find out to all other values, then you assume you have to find out the value. So you got 12 mm. What about others? 0 0.012 meters, maybe. Yes? Ranjali. Is it 0 0.012 meters? Rashmi. Okay. So meter or mm, you can write in any one uh, unit. No problem. Okay, last problem we will note down. It's also very important based on the different diameters of the pipe. How the capillary action will change by diameter of the pipe. Here two tubes are given or two limbs of the pipes are given. One limb is measuring 20 mm in diameter and other limb is 2 mm in diameter. Water is poured in both the tubes. Okay, it is connected by vertical tubes like a U-tube. It is connected. We need to find out what is the difference in the level of surface of the liquid in the two limbs. I hope all can assume two limbs of pipe are connected by one of the horizontal pipe. It is making like a U-tube. U-shaped tube it is making in that water is poured and we need to find out the difference in the levels of water provided one lamb is 20 mm in diameter another tube is 2 mm in diameter so consider two cases here 20 mm diameter solve one problem 2 mm you solve another problem then take the difference and for this water is given for the density Surface tension of the water is also given 0 0.073 Newton per meter for water. So in this again, theta value is not given, but we need to find out the rise or fall of the uh, liquid. Then you can take cos of 0. To find H1 value. Then you take for the other diameter of the pipe. So finally, you should get H1 and H2, both values, and take the difference. So in this four sigma cos theta, you can consider at cos zero, angle is not given here. Because in this angle is also not given and H is also not given. In such case, you assume the theta value. So in both equation changes only the diameter. One is 20 mm, another is 2 mm. Yes, Srikanth. Srikanth is attentive or not attentive?
yes sir are you calculating yes sir so how much is the difference in h please parallelly do the calculations also so one of the answer given by student here difference is how much okay h1 h2 1.5 mm 15 mm difference is 0.0134 meters 0.0134 meters h2 itself is 0.01339 meters okay so check the answers here h1 is 0.01488 meters h2 is 0.01339 meters so here for 2 mm diameter height is or the rise of uh, water is 0.01488 and for the larger diameter 20 mm the h2 or h1 is 0.01339 meters so which pipe the rise is more small diameter or larger diameter so rise of water is more in smaller diameter pipe so that is shown in the sketch here and once you take the difference the difference is all of you can note down difference is 0.00149 meters difference in h1 and h2 that effective rise in the capillary action smaller pipe okay so by change in the diameter the capillary rise also changes it is inversely proportional if the diameter of the pipe is small the rise of the water is more or the liquid is more now we'll go to the other concept pressure and its measurement <coughs> so pressure always we measure for a given area or the force acting per unit area now whenever the fluid is stagnant condition without any flow or without any disturbance we consider on complete surface area of that layer or any layer if you consider in between the liquid also that force will be constant throughout the area so that's why the pressure is nothing but or the pressure in the fluid is nothing but what it is a force acting per unit area and if the fluid is stationary then the force exerted by the surrounding fluid on that area da will always be perpendicular to that surface okay and also you know the units of pressure now we will take two derivations or two laws that is one is pascal's law and one more is hydrostatic law in pascal's law we are defining how the pressure forces are equal in all the directions for a small uh, liquid molecule okay for a given small liquid molecule in any given uh, substance or in the same molecules or kept outside so for that small molecule of a liquid if you see without or negligible weight such molecules if you consider the pressure acting in all the directions it is equal so how it is equal we'll see in the derivation next is hydrostatic law in that hydrostatic law what they are going to explain us is if you consider some bulk liquid or some volume of the liquid with some weight in such cases what about the vertical forces how the vertical forces are changing and what about the horizontal or the side forces so in that derivation what they are going to discuss is whatever the amount or the volume i am not telling molecules the volume of the given liquid with some weight okay pascal's law they are not considering weight but in the hydrostatic law we are considering weight because in the huge containers the weight of the liquid is very high in such cases as we move downside whether the pressure is going to increase in the liquid and as we move in the horizontal or in the vertical direction upside how the pressure is going to behave so that will be discussed in these two laws so we'll discuss this pascal's law and we'll stop the class so just observe in this pascal's law 
or shall i continue the class without break anyhow we have two hours shall i continue the class okay so in this pascal has assumed a small liquid molecule, molecule of wedge shape or the triangular shape or it is also having a triangular shape with thickness one or the negligible thickness unit thickness he has considered so that trapezoidal or the triangular shape he has taken abc abc as shown in the sketch in this angle abc makes angle theta so that at b you can see theta is given similarly the vertical pressure what is acting on the surface bc or on the ds line if you see that angle also may making theta angle the vertical action of the force in downward or the upward direction now here we are taking the vertical forces the horizontal forces okay and the side forces so vertical force we are taking py in the direction of y we are taking force is what p into area pressure into area that you can see in the above equation force can be defined as pressure multiplied by area so in the vertical upward upward direction in the sketch if you see the force is acting in the upward direction that force can be written as py into dx why dx in the x direction ac direction if you see it is the x distance x so small distance x if you consider that is dx and width of the wedge shape or the triangular shape if you see it is having unit or unit thickness one they have considered into one i hope you are understanding ac is the length width is one so ac is dx width is one thickness is one and at what pressure is acting from the bottom it is py similarly on the side if you see pressure px is acting on this surface that surface is what ab ab and width is 1 so ab is what vertical distance that i can consider it as dy small molecule we have considered that's why it is a small y that is dy and width is 1 mm so i can write the total force acting on the side or in the direction of x is px into dy into 1 that is nothing but p da or p into a and in the <coughs> other z direction if you see so one is x axis one is y axis one more you can take z axis in three dimensions so that z axis if you see the force acting in z axis is pz into this inclined length they have taken ds because force will be acting perpendicular to that area inclined to that area the total width or the length of that bc is they have considered as ds or you can consider dz also like dx dy and dz no issue so that length they have considered ds or dz width of that plate is one unit dimension that they have considered and cos theta in different or the theta they have defined in different angles like cos of theta if you take i can write it as ab by bc adjacent by hypotenuse sin theta all of you know opposite by hypotenuse that is ac by bc or i can write it as dx by ds why because ac we are defining it as in x direction dx bc we are defining it as in s direction or the z direction dz and this ab by bc for the cos theta you can you can also write it as dy by ds i think the forces acting in three di directions and theta values how they are written you all understood yes okay now we will write the equation for balancing the forces 
in different directions so what is pascal's law the intensity of the pressure at a point in a static fluid is equal in all directions so as i told you if you take the pressures in x y or z for a small molecule without any movement without any pressure or external pressures or without any flow in stagnant conditions small molecule of uh, water or liquid if you take that e forces acting on each molecule is equal in all directions now what he will do is he will take all these forces and try to balance it with the weight the forces on the faces if you see as i told on ab what force is acting px into area that is dy into 1 on ac on ac face what is acting py dx into 1 okay on bc face what is acting pz ds into 1 pressure into area that is force that all values they have taken here all the directions all the forces and weight of the wedge can be given later it will be negligible for the small molecule but here we are considering for the writing equation that already we have seen volume into rho g yes so that rho g is what weight of the given liquid rho g into volume rho g is specific weight and for a given volume it is beca it becomes total weight the volume of the liquid see here volume of the liquid if i want to try to find out for this uh, triangular shape of uh, object i can write it at ac into ab if i write ac into ab as a area that becomes the area of the rectangle ab into ac if i take divide by 2 that becomes half of the triangle or this triangular shape area so what they have done that section area they have taken ab into ac by 2 into the width of the plate or the width of that uh, liquid volume is 1 thickness is 1 i hope you are understanding ab by AC, ab into ac by 2 is the triangular area not the rectangular area ab into ac is rectangular area divided by half if i take that will be exactly half of that rectangular area into rho into g this is the weight acting and they are writing that ab ac in the form of theta also later so at equilibrium if you see the summation of all the forces will be zero okay in such case just a minute so here it is resolving all the forces in one direction what they have done in x direction if we solve the equations that is px dy into 1 then z is a inclined component that's why we have taken cos of theta the x direction component will become pz ds into 1 is a force into what angle it is acting in x direction it is acting in the direction of cos of theta because of that angle here you can recall the angle how much it is acting okay so this angle pz pressure is acting opposite to x direction at what angle by theta so that is written in negative value so only these two forces are acting in the x direction not the weight weight is acting in vertically downward direction so that they are not considered so that will be equal to zero and from ds cos theta if you see ds cos theta we can replace with dy why because we already defined what is cos theta cos theta can be written as dy by ds so once you know that in terms of ds the cos theta can be written what is that cos theta in terms of ds i can write it as dy by ds or dx by ds so in that form they have taken it as dy is that clear now later to substitute that dy value because we need to exchange those dy in terms of ds or ds in terms of dy any one form 
because we need to simplify the equation so what they have done they have kept the dy as it is ds only they have replaced or ds cos theta they have replaced with dy so now equation becomes pressure force in x direction px into area is dy into 1 minus pz dy into 1 equal to 0 now if you see the both equations on left or right side if you consider both px dy is also equal to pz dy or i can write it as px is equal to pz in the x direction force so pressure forces are equal in the horizontal directions the next is in y direction if you consider as i told weight we need to consider here because of the vertical action so py dx into 1 see the py where it is acting py is in vertical direction px into 1 py minus of pz where it is acting it is acting downward direction and weight if you neglect just a minute yes is it audible now okay so now if you consider vertical action of forces first term vertically upward direction which is acting is py dx and vertically downward forces which are acting are the pz which is inclined now i can take it as pz ds cos of 90 minus theta earlier we have taken cos of uh, theta for the x direction now for y direction component i can write it as pz ds cos of 90 minus theta okay into 1 into 1 is what into width of that given plate of the volume of the liquid molecule minus weight they have considered here what is weight this we had written same thing here this equation ab into ac ab into ac what they have done here they have replaced with the dx into dy just to tell us in which direction or the which areas they have considered those lengths they have written in x and y directions so dx and dy divided by 2 that is the area of that plate or the molecule into width 1 into rho into g for the weight so this weight and the inclined direction of the pz for force in the z direction these are acting in the opposite direction or downward direction negative sign upward direction force acting is py dx so this all if you equate i can write it as py dx so now i'll remove that one or the width value width is negligible so py dx pz into ds into sin theta so cos of 90 minus theta is sin theta can write minus dx dy by 2 rho g in this again what they are doing either they can replace this dx by dy because we need to find out the forces or the pressure acting in y direction now vertical direction so we need to replace this dx we can replace this ds and also in the last term i can replace this dx so one of the equation is what sin of theta we can write it as dx by ds 
or I can write it as dx sin theta as dx. So wherever dx is there, I can replace with ds sin theta or ds sin theta also you can replace with dx. So I can write it as py dx here. dx we have written retained as it is py dx then minus of pz dx pz dx okay in this form. Now minus of this value. Why they have not taken this dx dy by 2 into rho g weight? So as per the small molecule of liquid is considered or the small element is considered not the big volume so weight we can can be neglected so assuming that the force acting in vertical direction also becomes py equal to pz so when py equal to pz or px equal to pz i can it as or we can write it as pressure acting in all the directions or the forces acting perpendicular to the areas in all the directions all will be equal for the Pascal's law that is px equal to dy equal to pz so where we started we started with this small molecule of uh, liquid in the trapezoidal shape abc with the thickness of uh, one and we defined the angles theta in the dx dy ds okay and after that what we have done we found out the forces acting in all three surfaces so for example force acting in the inclined surface is pressure into area we took pz ds that is the total length width is one like this we had defined all the three forces and we equated in different directions in horizontal direction and in vertical direction is that clear so after taking in horizontal direction, we didn't have any weight there acting in horizontal direction. So we came to the Px equal to Pz equation. And in the third equation, we took all the vertical forces. Which are those vertical forces? Py dx into 1 is acting upward direction, we took positive. Pz ds into 1, which is inclined on the surface, it is acting in vertical downward direction, negative sign, with cos of 90 minus theta. And the small weight of that or negligible or almost near to zero weight is acting downwards that weight we have taken as surface area of this plate or the volume of this plate is nothing but dx into dy area of the triangle divided by 2 thickness of the plate is 1 that is the volume and if you multiply that volume into rho g value or a specific weight it will become total weight of the molecule which is negligible for this given example. So after replacing this ds sin theta or ds cos theta above equation, one can write in the form of dy or dx, so that we can write the final equation as px equal to py equal to pz. I hope the theme behind this derivation is understood to everyone. Okay. Next, you focus on hydrostatic law. So, as I told you, here they are going to consider some bulk uh, fluid or with some uh, uh, big volume of the fluid with some weight they are going to consider. In such cases, or a big container when it is having large amount of volume of water, how these forces or the hydrostatic law is going to uh, help us to find the pressure forces in different directions and how it is going to vary. Again, we are going to assume this bulk fluid is in static or rest condition in a container and we are assuming this volume of the fluid is taken for the analysis. Okay. So either you can take all the values in different directions and for this case they have taken y direction as z. 
okay to just differentiate from other uh, expressions they have taken height as dz small dz volume is considered this can be or the horizontal line can be considered as dx okay and the width can be considered as dy however only thing is what dz we need to focus and it is considered just below the water surface or the liquid surface below at a distance of z capital z so as you may container in that big container of water we are considering a small volume of the liquid of dimensions dz by dx dy like that three dimension and it is just below the water surface of the liquid surface by distance z and some of the pressure is taken on the surface as pda because of the weight of the liquid which is above the volume considered here that is p into da that is acting perpendicular to the surface top surface and the weight of the liquid is acting at the downward direction now we'll see which is the weight which is the forces how to write and other things and how to come to the conclusion of this law so here hydrostatic law is defined as the rate of increase of pressure in vertical downward direction must be equal to the specific weight of the fluid specific weight is rho g rho into g specific weight of the liquid at that point so for a given point of volume of the liquid what they are telling the rate of increase of pressure in a vertical downward direction must be equal so as the point goes on decreasing as i consider the pressure force at the surface of the liquid it is atmospheric pressure as we go downside from the surface of the water or the surface of the liquid as we go down for any given points we consider the pressure forces what they are telling it is in the downward direction must be equal to specific weight of that fluid specific weight up to what if i consider that vertical downward direction force if i consider the pressure at c point that becomes the pressure acting because of the specific weight of the liquid at that point means specific weight up to c from the open surface of the water whatever the weight is acting that becomes the pressure point at c so how it will be we'll see in the derivation so here weight they have written as volume into rho g again same thing volume into rho g is what volume i am writing area of the given volume or that surface downward surface that is da small area we have considered dz is the thickness or the height of that volume i hope you are understanding the down, downward side if you see the area that we have written as da and for what volume bulk volume we have considered the thickness or the height that becomes dz in this example and the pressure force what is acting in the downward direction is given by p plus because as the definition tells the hydrostatic law tells as we move downside as we move downside the pressure force is going to increase vertically and it will be equal to the specific weight of the liquid so how much it will be increasing it will be increasing by plus change in that pressure with respect to change in the height dz so that's why they have written small change del del p by del z into del z because it is changing with respect to del z into da what is da area of the bottom surface okay that surface is moving we are assuming it is moving from the top to bottom when it is at the bottom side dc side or the bottom side we are considering it, it as increased by some value how much it is increased by volume or the value p plus del p by del z into del z into area because we are considering this total term as a force pressure into area pressure is p plus this term into area in the downward direction now we we'll take in the equilibrium at equilibrium as a summation of force 
equal to zero, you can consider, or I can consider some forces equal to other side, whatever. So when the liquid is in static condition, I can assume there is no movement of the liquid, or this volume is not moving downside or upside, or horizontally any direction. So forces without any forces, it cannot move only. So summation of all the forces in any direction, if you consider, I can take it as zero. So at the top surface, if you see whatever the pressure is acting, all the forces they have taken in y direction or the downward direction z. The top surface pressure was, or the force was P into d A, with only the water which is present above the surface of that liquid volume, pressure into that area. Once it moves downside, because of the change in distance g, d z, there will be slight increase in the pressure because of this hydrostatic law. The person who has derived, he tells that as you move downside in the liquids, the pressure forces increases. So what he has done? He has taken P d A. Weight is also acting in the same direction. Last term you can observe. He has taken plus weight term minus minus y because that pressure is stabilized or the volume of the liquid is kept at a stagnant condition by that opposing force which is acting upside. So minus of P del P by del Z into del Z is a pressure pressure into area. So just recall once again we are taking the summation of all the forces in vertical direction is zero. Even in horizontal direction it will be zero. So in vertical direction, if you consider all the forces, that is pressure into area, the top surface is acted by PDA force, and the weight is acting also in the downward direction, that is rho g dA dz, and which force is opposing is minus P plus del P, that is the bottom surface. So because of this opposing force, negative sign, the volume of that liquid is kept in stable condition. Otherwise, it will fall down. It will move downside because of the more weight. We cannot tell the same liquid volume what we considered in the same fluid. It is having different weight and different volumes or the densities. It will be having same properties. Okay, It will be maintained at a given height for a long time without until and unless it is disturbed. So in such condition, we can take this as an opposing force to keep it in a stable condition. So minus of P del P by del Z into del Z they have taken. And below they have opened that bracket. So now what we can write P dA minus of so I'll multiply P into dA, which is outside the bracket dA, that I'll multiply, minus this dou P or del P by del Z into del Z into dA. This is the small change in the pressure at a given distance Z dz plus weight. After this, these two equations are equated. The weight of the liquid and a small change in the pressure, whatever is remaining here, those terms are equated. That is rho g dA dz del P by del z dz into dA. So we can cancel dz dA and dz dA on both sides. Now we have left with del P by del z equal to rho g. Now, as we have written del P, del Z something, we can integrate, we can make it as P by Z also in one of the form, or else we can keep it as it is to tell that for a change in pressure, what is the change in the specific weight, rho G. I hope you are understanding. Or we, we are trying to tell it for a change in height, dz, or a small change in the Z value, del Z, how the specific weight is changing with respect to change in the pressure also. So that's why we are not integrating and writing it. Because once you integrate and write it, I can write it as P equal to rho g z only. That itself is a hydrostatic law. But before that, to understand the hydrostatic law, I can tell it as whenever there is a change in pressure for a bulk mass of liquid in a big tank, it changes because of the change in height. That is del z and specific weight rho g. Is that clear? 
so now later what i can do is now i'll integrate now i'll integrate i'll tell that pressure force acting at any given point in the liquid so people those who are swimming know the swimming or any diving in the liquids or water especially so they can understand as you go inside water very deep the pressure forces of the water will be acting more on the skin or the body but as you float on the water surface while floating you can sense the buoyancy force later we will discuss or the surface tension and also you may feel very less pressure of the water is acting on your body while floating on the water but once you dive inside the water and go very deep the forces will be acting more so that is defined by the hydrostatic law that is p equal to rho g z means pressure at the bottom layer or the bottom surface if you find it will be increasing with respect to depth of the water z or depth of the water h also you can write rho g h as i written here in the uh, pascal's law where we had written rho g h So here we have written clearly our capillarity. The weight of the liquid itself defined by what rho g h into volume. So that rho g h itself is a pressure. So similarly here, height of the liquid they have taken z just to differentiate from the other laws with the hydrostatic law. H value they have replaced with the z. So rho g z. So z is proportional or the height is proportional to pressure itself. so whenever you measure the pressure at the surface of water it is atmospheric pressure as you go downside the pressure value will increase for the bulk volume of water not for a small volume as we considered in pascal's law so pascal's law and the hydrostatic law difference you understood i think at this point what is the considerations between both the laws so head we can consider it as p by rho g or h value is p by rho g for the hydrostatic law i want to show all of you <coughs> okay so we'll take one simple example to we'll understand from this numerical on which law we need to solve the problem so let us just focus here the diameter of a small piston and a large piston of a hydraulic jack okay so here hydraulic jack is taken i can take it as pascal's law only as far as now the point is concerned because in Pas pascal's law we are not bothered about the a uh, pressure difference with the height we are bothered about the molecules how they are acting okay so diameter of a small piston and a large piston of a hydraulic jack are 3 cm and 10 cm respectively so piston diameter if they have given we can assume it is equal to cylinder cylinder diameter also that is 3 cm and 10 cm force of 18 newton is applied on a small piston which is small piston 3 cm find the load lifted by the large piston ram sir one just a minute
Yes, coming back to the problem. So there are two pistons connected each other like a limb of pipe what you have considered. Two pipes connected each other like that here two pistons with two cylinders are connected each other for the Pascal's law working on Pascal's law like hydraulic jack. Okay. Here two pistons are given with 3 cm and 10 cm. The smallest piston is 3 cm. A force of 80 Newton is applied on the smallest piston 3 cm. Find the load lifted by the large piston ram when when the pistons are at same level okay when the pistons are at same level what is the force small piston is 40 centimeter above the large piston so we need to find out how much is the load lifted by the large piston when the small piston is acting with some load now for the consideration they have given the density of the liquid in jack is given as 1000 kg per meter cube so can anyone tell me the density of the liquid considered is a, as 1000 kg per meter cube which is that liquid 1000 kg per meter cube yes water is the liquid so water is filled so just i'll go to the sketch here to make you more understand in this sketch you can consider that two cylinders filled with water and connected with the horizontal limb or an inclined pipe whatever it is just a hydraulic application so small piston is shown on the right side p and the ram is shown on the or the large piston is shown on the left side with some weight it has to lift or it has to overcome that weight So this is given in the problem. Now we need to take all the given details. So small piston, they can call it as plunger. Small piston. Then area of that small piston, how much they can find out? They have given the three centimeter as diameter. So if the piston diameter is known, I can find out the area of the piston. So area of the small piston is 7.068 cm square and for the ram if i take pi by 4 d square for the larger piston which is having 12 cm diameter i think 10 cm 10 cm diameter for the larger piston or ram that area is 78.54 cm square so this you can find out areas you can find out and the force applied on the smaller piston is 80 newtons now what we are telling you is Find the load. See there. See the question. Find the load lifted by the large piston such that the piston are at same level. Means how much is load is there to balance it? The question may come, sir. When pistons are not moving, then what it is lifting? It's not like that. We have to apply some pressure on the smaller piston. Whatever the extra load is kept here to balance it. Balance means without any movement. It has to retain the same position without any disturbance at distance. And second case is small piston is four centimeter above. If the smaller piston is forty centimeter above the larger piston, then what is the load lifted, or what is the load acting on the larger piston? If the larger piston load is more, that larger piston will move down. Smaller piston will move up. Is that clear? So these two cases are given. Now we will go by the given data and try to find out or which law can be used for finding the other details. So here when the pistons are at same level, see here as the same pressure is transmitted, I can tell it as pressure on the smaller piston is equal to pressure on the larger piston. Why? Because force may be changing but pressure is not changing. I hope the point is clear. Pressure is what force acting on that area or unit area of that small piston and the large piston. When both are equal, as we defined Px equal to Pz like that, here also pressure on S is equal to pressure on larger piston. So I can write force by area on small piston and force by area on the large piston. 
no doubt we know that areas are different so that force will be different to balance now to balance how much force will be acting that we need to find area we know we have to find out the forces so we'll substitute all the known values here on larger piston you consider what is this at at is force on the smaller piston applied so that at what newton uh, newton are they have given or what you have given kg they have given okay 80 newtons means there is no required for conversion 80 newton force is acting on a smaller piston with area of smaller piston with 3 cm diameter that is 7.068 cm square into area of the larger piston that is 78.54 so either you can convert cm square into meter square but here both values will be can, uh, uh, units can be cancelled or units will not come into picture in the solution no need to convert that centimeter square into meter square okay so this we need to check in substitution in the substitution or after substitution whether the conversion of units are required or not that we need to check and we have to go further so as far as this problem is concerned there is no conversion of centimeter to meters now once you substitute all these known values like we know the force on small piston area of the small piston we know area of the large piston is also given only unknown is how much load or the how much force it can lift or to balance that weight or the force on the larger piston okay how much it is going to have so once you equate these all terms we can understand on the larger piston the force or the weight acting is triple 8.96 newtons now can you tell me whether this 888.96 weight is acting on the piston or whether the weight is already there on the piston or any moment is there in the piston is there any moment for that weight triple 8 newtons yes when i apply a force on small piston of 80 newtons or if i apply the force on larger piston triple eight point nine six whether both the pistons are moving or not moving Sunil, Sunil Karigar, Sneha, yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. the pistons are moving. So which answer is correct for this condition are they moving or not moving pistons will not move now why because the condition on that condition only we have taken the equations for the first condition by telling the first condition pistons are at the same level when the pistons are at same level there is no movement of the pistons only thing to keep the pistons on the same level or without any movement when you apply the pressure on small piston it will move as per your analysis it is correct but when the piston moves to balance that movement of the piston of larger piston or the smaller piston after applying the load how much extra load i have to apply on the larger ram such that both pistons will be on the same level that is the question so to keep the pistons without any movement on the same level with 18 newton on the smaller piston i have to apply 
ट्रिपल एट न्यूटन्स ऑन द लार्जर पिस्टन ट्रिपल एट पॉइंट नाइन सिक्स न्यूटन ऑन द लार्जर पिस्टन सो दैट नाउ आफ्टर अप्लाइंग लोड ऑन द लार्जर पिस्टन ऑल्सो ऑफ दिस लोड नाउ द बोथ द पिस्टन आर ऑन द सेम लेवल द पॉइंट इज क्लियर okay next condition is now they have given moment of piston now to make the moment of piston with a given distance how much load should be applied what is the condition when small piston is 40 cm above now tell me to make the small piston above 40 cm with respect to larger piston on which side the load should be more on the larger piston or on the smaller piston Which side? Uh, sorry, not the load or force. It should be pressure. On which side the pressure should be more? Left side or right side? Okay, larger piston or smaller piston? We'll see. Okay. Okay. In the second case, consider the case. Above the larger piston, it is 40 cm above. Now again, at the given level, at one of the level, you can consider the forces acting. So pressure at one section, A, if you consider force by area plus pressure intensity due to the 40 cm of liquid. Now can you tell me the force per unit area as we know Pascal's law or the Rossi as we know? But pressure intensity due to the 40 centimeter of liquid. From which law they have written this? That 40 centimeter height of liquid, that weight also they are going to consider, or the pressure intensity of that weight also they are going to consider. What is that law? Pascal's law. That is hydrostatic law. Rho g h or rho g z if you take. Because of the liquid height, what pressure is acting? If you consider, that will become hydrostatic law. Pascal's law is for a given small volume of liquid, pressure on all the sides of the liquid is same. That what first condition we have taken, without any change in the level, at a given same level, what is the pressure acting? P on the smaller piston, pressure on the smaller piston is equal to pressure on the larger piston because both on the same level. We had considered without any uh, weight of the liquid, we didn't consider anything, so that becomes a Pascal's law. First condition. Second condition, if you take, we are taking Pascal's law as well as hydrostatic law because that 40 centimeter of liquid, what is lifted up in the smaller piston, that is also lifting the weight of water also with piston weight. okay so there we are going to recall that hydrostatic law so that's why they have taken for the pressure intensity due to 40 cm of liquid that becomes rho g h so force per unit area plus rho g h is the total pressure acting on the right side so h is nothing but here dead that is 40 cm they have converted into meters so finally the pressure acting on the one side or the right side limb it is 3924 newton per meter square now we need to balance or now we need to check how much the pressure should be acting on the left side is that clear so what is the total pressure acting at by or force by area of the smaller piston on the right side at by 7.068 in centimeters plus 0.3924. So you can take in centimeters or meters. Find the value in newton per centimeter square or newton per meter square. This pressure force. Now we need to check on the left side. That is the same pressure. That is 11.71 newton per centimeter square. Same pressure to be transmitted to the large piston. because after lifting by 40 cm see here 
in the sketch once i apply some load on the left side or the weight side larger piston this smaller piston is lifting up after lifting up to 40 cm now both pistons are balanced because both side the pressure becomes same force per unit area becomes same okay so that's why we we need to balance now this 11.71 newton per cm square whatever the pressure is there this is also equal on the left side of the larger piston now to find that force we know that force per unit area is pressure so force per unit area on the larger piston if you take it is 11.71 newton per meter square or the newton per centimeter square so to find the force on larger piston i will multiply what i'll multiply the pressure into area of that larger piston so once you multiply with the larger piston what will happen i can find out the larger piston force that is 919.7 newton Now, from this problem, what we understood is the importance of Pascal's law or the hydrostatic law. Because see, the force on small piston and the large piston, how much is the difference? But even pressure is same. You can recall the small force applied by from your car, like clutch or brake. Okay. So, if if it is a hydraulic system, you can apply the small force on the small piston. by brake or clutch or some lever but what is the force generated how much force you applied on the small lever and how much force is available on the large piston if you see it is very huge difference see here in the first case at same level the small piston force is 80 large piston force available is 888 it all depends on the area of the piston how much you are maintaining this is the importance of pascal's law means we can transfer the same pressure equal in all the directions such that if you change the areas of the piston and other things by maintaining the area and the uh, distance of the pistons one can change these forces that is the importance here also you can see for that change in movement of the piston of smaller piston what is the force acting 80 and force available on the larger piston is 99919 so if you apply 919 newton of force on the larger piston smaller piston can get the small force of 80 newtons are you getting the problem where the pascal law is applied where the hydrostatic law is applied so whenever the liquid height is present in a given containers you have to go by hydrostatic law you have to add whenever there is a transfer of forces or the pressure in horizontal direction or the vertical direction without change in the liquid layers or the liquid uh, levels then you can use pascal's law so combining these two law one can design a hydraulic jack so that by using a small piston or a larger piston he can change the forces okay so effort required by the human being whenever he want to apply some load the effort from the human being can be reduced and the effort from the machine what it is going to use output can be increased hydraulic law yes so later once again recall this both the laws you can understand the applications once again okay take the next problem intensity of pressure required at a point is 40 kilo pascal intensity of the pressure required at a point is 40 kilo pascal 10 raised to 3 newton per meter square or 
10 raised to 3 Pascal, 40 into 10 raised to 3 Pascal. Find corresponding head in water, mercury, and oil of specific gravity point. So, what is the meaning of this question? They want to prepare some pressure by three liquids. By three liquids. One is by water, one is by one mercury, and one is by oil of specific gravity 0.9. And by maintaining some head, they want to prepare some pressure at the bottom. So, which law you can apply when the water level or the liquid volume is at some height? How the pressure of that liquid is going to act? Which law you can apply? Just comment here or you can unmute and tell me. Hydrostatic law. Very good. Hydrostatic law. Yes, now see here. H value we need to find out. So H value we cannot find out in the Pascal's law. Because pressure will be equal on all the directions. In the sense, if you assume a pressurized gas is present or the pressurized liquid is present in this room where we are sitting now. Okay, some pressure is available in the room. If I open the door, the pressure of liquid what is moving outside may be different. If I open a small window in the room, the pressure or that but what force it is flowing outside, that will be different. I hope you are understanding. The small opening is there, the velocity at which the gases are moving outside or the liquid is moving outside will be high velocity, but the quantity will be less. But if I open the complete door, what will happen? The area opening is more, velocity may be less, but the speed of the movement of the liquid also reduces because there is a big opening, sudden opening will be there. That is the Pascal's law. But here in the head, how much you have to find out for the required pressure means how much water you have to fill in a container such that the bottom of the container should have the pressure of 40 kilo Pascal. That is the meaning. Or take one uh, pot in the home. I want 40 kilo Pascal to be applied by that pot. You fill the water. So how much water to be filled in that pot up to what head? That is defined by the hydrostatic law. So yes, we know that P by rho G we can find out. So for the water, 40 kilo Pascal, they have given 40 into 10 raised to 3. Density of water is 1000. G is 9.81, one can find out how much is the head required for water. So if I fill the container for this example, the container dimensions they are not given, but if you take water of 4.077 or 4 meters of water head, if you consider 4 meters around, you take 4 floors, or sorry, around 3 floors if you consider, 3 floors of water if I fill, the bottom pressure what is generated by this water is around 40 kilo Pascal. The meaning is that. Okay. One more is with mercury. So you find for mercury and oil specific gravity 0.9. How much head of water and how much head of oil should be filled such that it will prepare 40 kilo Pascal using same equation and tell the answers. So use the same equation and find the answers or you can unmute and tell me the answers. Suchita, any answers? 
सुचिता दमन की yes, yes. answer is for mercury point two nine nine meters. Good. Okay. So for oil of specific gravity, they have given. Now from specific gravity, how you find out the density? You have to check because already we have solved the problems on density, specific gravity, or relative density, specific weight. We have solved many problems. So recall those old concepts and convert that specific gravity of oil into density and substitute in this equation. Have to check it now. For oil, four point five three meters. Four point five three meters or what? Okay, meters. Four point four four meter. Okay, we'll check. Yes. For mercury, point two nine nine. Very good. Point two nine nine meters. For oil, it is four point five three meters. Okay. So, what is the meaning of this problem? means to get 40 kilo pascal pressure at a given point i can go for mercury with very less height because mercury density is very high and it can prepare large amount of force with small amount of height that is around only 0.299 meters of mercury is enough because but mercury is costlier than water and other oils that is one of the problem or i can go for this water itself rather than oil because oil is also costly or i have to pay and i have to fill the vertical or i have to fill the tank up to 4.53 meters for oil then i can prepare the pressure at the bottom of 40 kilo pascal but water if you see it is less costly freely available or it is available as very very less cost i can go for water i can uh, prepare the head of 4.077 meter of water so that at the bottom i can prepare the pressure of 4.077 uh, sorry 40 kilo pascal of pressure so like this by using various density of fluids one can prepare the required head or the required pressures okay i think time is up now we'll stop here we'll continue the next class with the different concepts and we'll i think uh, i will go with the manometers how to measure the pressure with different devices we'll discuss in the next class and how the pressure is measured with respect to atmosphere or with respect to different measuring instruments how it is defined uh, we'll discuss about those all different types of pressures in the next class okay thank you